Welcome to this episode of WikiWalks, a short podcast devoted to some of the more intriguing and, huh, who knew, articles that you can run across in the weird world of Wikipedia. I'm your host, Chris Grismer. Well, hey, hey, howdy, friends. I hope you're all doing well in these strange times that continue. Maybe soon we'll all be able to venture out of isolation and see friends that we recognize. It's always nice, right, to be recognized by a friend? Well, if you're listening to this episode in the U.S., who do you think was the first country to recognize the U.S. as its own sovereign nation? Maybe France? Maybe Spain? I mean, the French helped us in the Revolutionary War, right? But no, none of these answers are correct. It was Morocco. Yep, that's right. The small North African nation was the first to look at the former Confederation of Colonies and say, Now that there's a country. United States of America's legit. So yes, America's oldest unbroken treaty relationship is with Morocco. The treaty was signed by Thomas Jefferson and John Adams and Sultan Muhammad III. It has lasted over 236 years and is called the Treaty of Friendship. Formal relations between Morocco and the U.S. began in 1777. As George Washington and his troops took the field to make good on the Continental Congress's Declaration of Independence, the Sultan of Morocco, Muhammad III, granted American ships recognition and safe passage through the Straits of Gibraltar and in Moroccan ports. It was a dangerous business going through this part of North Africa, as it was infested with experienced and cutthroat Barbary pirates. That's actually part of the reason Morocco recognized the U.S. as an independent. Great Britain, France, and Spain were already paying protection money to the Barbary pirates, but if the U.S. is independent, well, uh, then they aren't really covered under Britain's agreement. It's kind of like if you wanted to run away from your parents and the first organization who recognized you as independent is your parents' insurance company. Negotiations began in 1783 on a formal treaty of commerce and friendship, which was signed in 1786 by Adams and Jefferson. On July 18, 1787, Congress ratified the treaty, which set forth the framework for diplomatic relations, assurances of non-hostility, access to markets of a most favored nation basis, and protection of U.S. ships from attack by foreign vessels in Moroccan waters. As U.S. President in 1789, George Washington wrote Muhammad III to thank him for Morocco's support. This young nation, just recovering from the waste and desolation of a long war, has not, as yet, had time to acquire riches by agriculture or commerce. But our soil is beautiful, and our people industrious, and we have reason to flatter ourselves that we shall gradually become useful to our friends. I shall not cease to promote every measure that may conduce to the friendship and harmony which so happily subsist between your empire and us. Interestingly enough, the treaty also stated that no Moroccan subject can be enslaved in America, which is why many free blacks claimed Moroccan citizenship, or Moorish American Islam, for example. Fun fact, Bermuda once had a U.S. slave ship show up because they'd gone off course. The courts told the captain, all slaves must come ashore. Little did the captain know that every slave that arrived in Bermuda, by law, had to be freed. So, the slaves got to live in a free tropical paradise, and the captain was, uh, well, he was SOL. Oddly enough, Morocco itself was actually a haven for Barbary pirates. Although the Sultan of Morocco told the pirates to leave the American ships alone if they were in Morocco's waters, but anywhere else, Morocco, they had a fight on their hands. Other sultans were not so gracious to the newly formed U.S. and refused to call off their dogs. The northern coast of Africa was referred to as the Barbary Coast and was known for having an aggressive fleet of seafaring ne'er-do-wells who absconded with anything and everything that came through its waters. The United States actually went to war against these pirates twice in the early 1800s. Although we didn't go it alone, we fought alongside Sweden. Yep, that's our good good ally Sweden, uh, which is super random. Many of these pirates were actually based in the Ottoman state of Tripoli, which is now in present-day Libya. In fact, the very first time the U.S. flag was raised on foreign soil was during the Barbary Wars and the Battle of Derna, after taking the Tripolitan city on the shore. In fact, shores of Tripoli, 
might sound familiar if you've ever heard the U.S. Marines hymn. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. I honestly could do about 10 hours on the Barbary Wars, which nobody knows about. You know, you've heard War of 1812, Civil War, Mexican-American War, Spanish-American War, all the world wars, those things. But the Barbary Wars? Those were really America's first big wars after the Revolution. And the U.S. Navy was born out of our need to do trade in Europe and through the Mediterranean and can trace much of its origin to these skirmishes. Ironically, given the proliferation of Islamophobia in America today, it was Muslims who first recognized the U.S. as a country. The Dutch were second, by the way. It might surprise you, the language contained in this long, unbroken treaty with our Moroccan friends. It might, in fact, turn your understanding of our Founding Fathers a bit on its head. So, I'm going to present it here without commentary. I'm literally just going to read what is in the Treaty of Tripoli, a.k.a. the Treaty of Friendship, our longest unbroken treaty. All right? You ready? This might surprise you. As the government of the United States of America is not, in any sense, founded on the Christian religion as it has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims, and as the said states never entered into any war or act of hostility against any Mohammedan nation, it is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinions shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between these two countries. Whew! Okay. So, there you have that. The longest unbroken treaty we have is with Morocco, wherein we state we are unequivocally not a Christian nation, helped protect us from some African pirate ships, and led to a war against other pirate nations with Sweden on our side, and served as the inspiration for the Marine Hymn. Hmm. Bet you never learned all that in history class. <laughs> <laughs>